Let's look at orbital motion. And this is actually a special case, circular. I'm not going to look at non-circular orbital motion. We will do that very soon. But for this, I want to just look at the motion of an object moving in a circle around a planet, a star, or a black hole, any gravitational object. So imagine I have some planet right here that could be Earth. It might not be, but we're looking at it in some orientation. And then I have a satellite moving in a circular path uh, around that planet. And this is a path of radius r with a, a velocity v. So at this instant, uh, I can actually call this the, the x, y axis. This, it's kind of difficult to do this in what's well, not difficult. It's just weird to do this for any position. Uh, so normally we'll, we'll freeze frame this at a location that makes it easy to analyze. And that's what we're doing here. So if that's the case, I can write Newton's second law here. I can say F net equals MA. Now, what force is reacting on this satellite? Well, there's this gravitational force like this. And I'll call that FG. And that's the only force acting on it. So if that's the case, I only have to deal with the x direction. There's nothing happening in the y direction. So I can say F net x equals m a x. And so that net force is going to be the gravitational force. Remember, in general, the magnitude of the gravitational force, g m e m over r squared. So g is a constant. g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Uh, m e is the mass of the planet. m is the mass of the spacecraft. And r is the radius of the circular orbit. So that's the only force uh, in the negative x direction. That's the mass of the spacecraft. What about the acceleration? Well, the, if this is moving a circle, the centripetal acceleration magnitude is going to be v squared over r. That's the definition of centripetal acceleration. If you want, I did derive that in a previous video. I derived this expression. Um, so you can go look at that. It also You can also write this as omega squared times r, where omega is the angular velocity. There's two ways to describe that. Let's start off with this. OK, so uh, let's put this together. So I have the gravitational force in the x, negative x direction. It's negative g m e m over r squared. And then I have that's going to be equal to the mass of the satellite, m, times the acceleration, which is negative v squared over r. OK, let's solve for the velocity. Suppose I know the, the, the distance I want to orbit, and I want to solve for the velocity. So I can do that. I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by m. If I divide this side by m, I divide that side by m, and it cancels. So the mass of the satellite doesn't matter. Now, let me be honest with you. This is the special case where the mass of the planet is so much larger than the mass of the satellite that we don't need to worry about that moving. Okay. In reality, if the Earth pulls on the satellite, the satellite pulls back on the Earth, and that can cause that to move, too. So it makes it a little bit more complicated. It's not impossible, though. But in this case, we'll assume it doesn't move, it doesn't accelerate, and the masses cancel. Now, I can also multiply both sides by r. Oh, and, and the negative signs cancel, too. I can multiply both sides by r, and I get v squared equals g mass of the Earth over r. Because one of the r's, this r cancels, and one of those cancels. And then I can take the square root, v, it's going to be the square root of g, m, e, over r. And that's orbital velocity. But notice what this says. This says that you have to go faster if the planet has more mass. That makes sense. Uh, but as you get further and further away, you don't have to go as fast. And that's because if I'm over here orbiting, I'm moving in a circle, uh, the acceleration is going to be a lot slower because my, my, the radius of curvature is larger. Uh, so I don't need as much of a force, and or I have less of a force too, right? Because the gravitational force decreases. So in order to make it move in a circle, I don't have to go as fast. Um, if I get really close to the surface of the Earth, then R is going to increase. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate the orbital velocity for the space station. I'm going to do that for you in just a second. 
So now there's another way we could do this. I could do this in terms of the angular velocity because I'm going to do it both ways. So if I have the angular velocity, then this equation is going to be uh, g mass of the earth m over r squared. Yeah, and I've already canceled the negative sign. It's going to be mass of the satellite omega squared r. So in this case, the mass cancels. I divide both sides by r and take the square root, and I get omega is the square root of g m e over r cubed. Right, because now those are one of those R's don't cancel. So this is my angular velocity moving in the circle. So let's go ahead and calculate for the Earth uh, how fast, how fast, and the angular velocity, and then we we'll use the angular velocity to calculate the orbital period for the space station. Okay, so I'm going to use some rough numbers here. So let's say the mass of the Earth is 5.9. Is it 5.9? It's 5.9 times 10 to the mass, I can't remember. It's 10 to the 24th. Mass of the Earth in kilograms, 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The radius of the Earth is 6.3. Ah, radius of Earth, of Earth in meters. 6.371. Times 10 to the sixth meters, uh, and then g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative eleventh newton meters squared per kilogram squared, uh, and the last thing I need is h, h is 400 kilometers. This is the uh, altitude, the orbital altitude. So if you look at the Earth, and there's my r radius of the Earth, and then here is the space station, and this is the distance of h. Right. So that means that R is going to be RE plus H. So it's going to be 6.371 times 10 to the 6th plus 400 times 10 to the 3rd. So that's going to be, uh, this is going to be 400 times 10 to the 5th. So this will be equal to 6.77 times 10 to the 6th meters. I did that right, right? I, I'm questioning myself. It, you, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you don't need a calculator for that. But if you want to just check, it's not. It doesn't hurt to check. Six point three seven one times ten to the sixth plus four hundred times ten to the third. I got it right. Okay, good. Okay, so let's calculate the velocity. V is going to be the square root of g m e over r. Yeah, it's over r. So it's going to be equal to the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. I'm going to leave off the units. Mass of the Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.67, no, 6, 6.77 times 10 to the 6th. Okay. Now, this is a great opportunity for you to practice your, um, your scientific notation and orders of operation and all that stuff. So I'm going to do that too, use this calculator. So I'm going to say the square root, and then I'm going to enter this, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. So here, if you don't do scientific notation, if you do 10 times, be careful because bad things can happen, especially when you divide by that. Just let me know. If I do it with scientific notation, it treats that all as one number, so I don't need to put parentheses around it. And then I can say times 5.5. 972 times 10 to the 24th divided by this 6.77 times 10 to the 6th close parentheses for the square root and I get 7.67 times 10 to the third meters per second that seems a little slow. Let's see. I guess it's okay. Uh, that's how fast the space station is moving. What about the angular velocity? Omega is going to be the square root of g m e over r cubed. So it's going to be the same thing. I just have to cube this on the bottom. So that's going to be the square root 6.677 times 10 to the negative 11th, 5.972 times 10 to the 24th, 
over 6.77 times 10 to the 6 cubed. Okay, let's see if we can do this. I am going to use an extra parenthesis down there just to be, just in case. So I'm going to start off with the square root. Square root, it puts the parenthesis there for me. 6.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 11th times 5.972 times 10 to the 24th divided by, uh, now I'm going to put a parenthesis here, 6.77 times 10 to the 6th close parentheses, raised to the power, arg, where's my raised to the power? I just can't see. 10x, no, ex, x squared, it's the glare. And you're probably looking at it saying, it's right there, you big dummy. And I get that. Oh, there it is. I think it's just this, hat three close parentheses and I get 1.13 times 10 to the negative third radians per second and let's check that so if I know omega is delta theta over delta t and I want to know how long it takes to go all the way around so that's going to be equal to 2 pi radians over delta t equals omega so I can solve for delta t. Delta t is going to be 2 pi over omega. So let's take 2 pi divided by that and see what we get. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to retype that. So clear 2 times pi divided by 1.13 times 10 to the negative 3, enter. 5.3. 5, 6 times 10 to the third seconds. And let's convert that to minutes because I actually know what this should be. So I'm going to say uh, there is one minute is 60 seconds and the seconds cancel. And so if I divide that by 60, so divide 60 equals, I get 92, 92.6 minutes. And then that is the right answer, so I'm happy. So it takes 92 minutes for the space station to orbit the Earth um, at that altitude with those values. Okay, hope that helps. Hope you had a good time. I'm going to make a model for orbital motion, but I'm going to do that uh, in a separate video.